Pleasure to meet everyone. My name's, my name's Hector. I'm the channel sales and educational manager at DxO. And for those who are not familiar with DxO, at DxO we create image processing software for all demanding and serious photographers on our consumer side. What we've been doing for the past 20 some odd years is we tear apart cameras and lenses for a living. That's what we're known for. We're known to be those mad scientists that tear apart cameras and lenses for a living. If you actually go into the pro digital um, department here at B&H, 90% of the physical um, hardware behind the counters we've torn apart and we've evaluated for image quality. Just by a show of hands, how many folks are familiar with like Photoshop, Okay, Elements, Lightroom. Um, how many of us can all agree that there's a bit of a overwhelming learning curve when it comes to those applications? Exactly. See, I, I usually run into the question a lot where it's like, hey Hector, what's the difference between what you're doing in DxO Optics Pro and what you're doing in, in Photoshop? What we're doing is we're making your life easier. You can spend 10 to 15 minutes in any overwhelming post-productive workflow, or you can spend three to five minutes in Optics Pro and let us do the remainder of the work for you. So that being said, I can stay here and talk about Optics Pro all day, every day, but what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna launch Optics Pro. Um, DxO Optics Pro is the world's leading raw converter. Literally, when I say what you can do, what would take you 10, 15 minutes in Photoshop, we're capable in doing in under three to five minutes. It's not going to take you four or five textbooks, six or seven DVDs, countless hours on YouTube, or my all-time favorite. You can spend four years in a university like I did to learn how to be proficient in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to just show you some of the some tips and tricks, certain things to look out for. Pretty much, this is another suggested workflow to make your life easier, to spend less time behind this and more time behind that, because that's, in all actuality, what we want to do. There's two major features in Optics Pro. You have your Organize tab and your Customization tab. Your Organize tab gives you the capability of tapping into your main directory. There's no need to, take your uh, there's no need to import your images into Optics Pro, like Lightroom. Take your memory card, put it in your card reader, take the subfolder, put it on your hard drive, and tap right into it. So that being said, we're actually just going to go and start showcasing what some of the general public started talking about. This is actually Canon's 8 to 15. No one, unfortunately, has a correction for this but just us. So what I'm going to do right now is you can clearly see that I jumped into my customization tab. My customization tab gives me the capability of doing all the fine tuning, all the heavy lifting, all the adjustments. Let's just take a minute or two just to step outside of ourselves and evaluate this image and stop and ask yourself, because honestly, only you know the real answer. How long would it take you in order to correct this image? A um, couple of minutes. For me, it's going to take me a couple of seconds. Considering the fact that we've evaluated well over 35,000 different types of lenses on the market, we're capable of making corrections such as this. I can actually go all the way down to my optical corrections palette, select distortion, and it's gone. This is the beauty about what we're doing at, in, at DxO. We're doing all the heavy lifting for you ahead of time in our laboratories, giving you the option to do all the fine tuning at your own discretion. That's where those three to five minutes come into hand supposed to doing the whole process. This is what started to get the general public to talk about us. Now, what made us famous by far was our denoising tool. Uh, we, we like to consider ourselves the dark knights. We're the only company in the world that can actually suppress digital noise up to ISOs of 400,000 or more. Completely linear, non-destructive. The files could be so clean you can nearly eat off of it at, at the end of the day. And just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, Here is one particular image, and I'm pretty sure you can already see where I'm getting at, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my left-hand side and pull up my EXIF editor. If you look closely at my EXIF editor, you can clearly see that this was shot with a Nikon D3S, a 70-200, wide open at 2.8, at a native state of 51,200 ISO. That's an extremely high ISO. 
What we're going to do right now is go all the way up to the upper toolbar and zoom in at a one-to-one -one ratio. And if you could be so kind just to evaluate this image, you can clearly see there's a tremendous amount of there's there's a tremendous amount of issues with this one image. We have a lot of digital noise on the reds. If you keep your main focus attention along the race car, you can clearly see that there's red and blue dots. Those red and blue dots are indicating that the phobions on the sensor are not reacting to light. It's dead. It's a sitting duck in water doing absolutely nothing. How many of us have actually used third-party denoising technology before? You ever use? Okay, wow. Okay, a good share amount of us. Okay, how many of us have ever used like uh, Nick denoising? Okay, how many of us have ever used Topaz denoising? Cool. How many of us have ever used the famous Noise Ninja? Okay, all fancy algorithms. That's all they are, algorithms. I remember five or seven years ago, um, I used to hear the word algorithm and I would be intimidated, I would be moved. The word algorithm at this point in the day and age that we live in, obviously as we already know, technology evolves so fast. It can be the latest, greatest today and it can be obsolete the next following day. Um, not only do we give you the algorithms that you want and that you need, but most importantly what we're doing is we're giving you the applied science. That's what no one else is giving you. That's what makes us so special, the applied science. Tearing apart the lenses, evaluating them, evaluating the sensors to give you the best image quality over anyone else in the industry. In order to fix this denoising issue, I would rely on my essential tools palette. Food for thought, tip of the day, call this what you want. Just by utilizing your essential tools, and your light and color advanced palette is guaranteed to, uh, to accommodate 90% of your workflow. I know that's a strong statement, but I'm gonna prove that statement. Ideally, um, ideally to accommodate 90% of our workflow, we would start off in Lightroom, we would go to Photoshop, we would use our Nick, we would use our Topaz, we would use our On One to accommodate 90% of the workflow. Those days are no longer available, they're gone, they're dead. We're talking about one single application that's a capable of accommodating 90% of your workflow. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about too. We're gonna to go to Essential Tools and we're gonna to go to Noise Reduction. There's two different types of noise reductions that you can choose from. You can choose from high quality and you can choose from our patented technology, what I like to call our Beast Prime. We're gonna select noise reduction, we're gonna select Prime, now you see it, now you don't. This is giving you a general preview of what we have to offer. The beauty about Optics Pro is that we can adapt to any third party host on the market. When I say host, I'm referring to Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, Elements, ACDC, GIMP, it doesn't matter. Our sole purpose of Optics Pro is to fix what's broken between the combination of the lens and a sensor to give you the best image quality hands down over anyone else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna send this image to Photoshop. We're gonna go down to export to application and then we're actually just gonna tap into applications. From this point on, I'm gonna select good old faithful blue. I shot this as a raw, I shoot raw all day every day but I like to um, process out as a 16-bit non-compressed TIFF. We're gonna export out. So we're gonna fix what's broken and send this as a 16-bit non-compressed TIFF. The beauty about this is we don't have to sit and wait. We don't have to wait, uh, you know, a magical rainbow spinning and spinning and spinning. We can actually continue to move forward in life. The cache performance is very aggressive in Optics Pro, which the software is actually working for you and not against you. So something like this, on the other hand, um, and just by a show of hands, how many of us would actually attempt to trash this out? Or... How many of those would try to tr uh, trash this out on an average day? Show of hands. Trash Get rid of it. Fix it? Oh. Get rid of it. You, tr oh, no. you try to recover this? If it's the only one I have of that scene. Then that's what you're stuck to. You, that's what you're stuck to work with. Okay. So considering the fact, let's say this is the only. This let's play that scenario. This is the one image that you have. Stop and ask yourself how long is it going to take you to recover this image? Right? Keep in mind, I want to be able to bring back my highlights, my shadow details. I want to showcase my absolute blacks, and no shadow details have to be recovered. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so this is, this is what we're going to do. What you would probably, what would probably take the average person about 10 to 15 minutes with the average know-how or the average, the average person would probably just give up on this one, one image. What's considered broken or just 
a trashed image is now a keeper. What you're going to do is you're actually going to go into your selective tone tool. The selective tone tool gives you the capability of adjusting your highlights, your midtones, your shadows, and your absolute blacks. The very first time I saw this demonstrated to me, I was completely blown away. Like literally, if you had seat belts on your seats, I would tell you to buckle up because this is going to take you for a ride. Four or five textbooks, six or seven DVDs, countless hours trying to figure out how to use this or recover this no longer exist. We're going to go into our selective tone tool. We're going to adjust our highlights. We're going to adjust our midtones. Keep your main focus attention on the shadows. Drop down on your blacks. And then I'll let you decide what do you want to use as your background layer in Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, Elements, ACDC, GIMP, it doesn't matter. Okay, right now is a really good demonstration. We shot that one image at 51,200 ISO. Photoshop's actually starting to take to the image, and here it goes. A file that's so clean, you can nearly eat off of it. If you keep your main focus attention, you can clearly see that all the digital noise is gone. The dead and hot pixels as well has been removed. But most importantly, if you keep your main focus attention along the letters, you can clearly see that we've maintained sharpness uniformity, unlike anyone else. If you used to try to do this in a third-party denoising tool, it gets a little flat, it turns into plastic, or my all-time favorite is just a fuzzy image, which is my favorite. It's when you get those fuzzy images. Now, what if, how many times have you ever forgot to make adjustments on your camera? May it be ISO, f-stop, uh, how many times have we ever been one stop, two stop underexposed, three stops underexposed? Well, whether if an image is three stops underexposed or three stops overexposed, we can fix. This is a global correction that's completely based off of sensor information that we're gathering in our labs. And this tool that we have to think is our DxO Smart Lighting tool. You can go based off of the drop down menus that we have to offer, but me personally, I like to uh, drive the wheel manually. We're going to go to DxO Smart Lighting, we're going to grab the intensity slider, and gradually, we're just going to turn on the lights. This is the before and after difference that you would get. Something that's completely underexposed by three stop has now been brought back to life. The blacks have been pre preserved. If we was to try to recover this type of information in a third party host, those blacks in the sky would light up like a Christmas tree. You'd start seeing the phobions go red, go blue, go green. I mean, obviously you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Now, to showcase how you can accommodate 90% of your workflow using one single app, um, application. This is the best example that I could possibly give you. On a day to day, in order to really bring this image back where I wanted to, I would have to work out of five individual applications. Probably start off in Lightroom, jump into Photoshop, start using my cool creative plugins like Nick or, or Topaz or On One filters to bring this image back. Those days are over. No longer need to use five overwhelming applications. One single application that's gonna accommodate 90% of my workflow, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. My very first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to exposure compensation and recover some shadow detail by going to center weight average. So you notice it gets a little bit dark. Um, I'm doing this because I'm working off of a CR2 file and CR2 files, I mean CMOS sensors are, are known to be a lot more forgiving when it comes to highlights and shadow details. That's why I can recover this a lot. We're going to go to DxO Smart Lighting and we're going to apply a fill. Keep your main focus attention on the clouds. All of a sudden they're coming back. That's a big difference already, all right? My next step is I'm going to go into contrast and we're just going to boost our contrast to 30 points. Micro contrast is actually a tool that slept, slept on a lot. Micro contrast is actually really nifty for two things. Let's say if you're dealing with foliage or most importantly you're dealing with skin tones and you want to give a nice clean even blend to the skin tones, micro contrast is actually a really nifty tool to use. So we're just going to bring the micro contrast down to about 30 points or so. My selective tone tool, I'm just going to finish off for my clouds. And then we're going to drop down on our absolute blacks. Color accentuation, if you're a sucker for color like I am, if it's not color accurate, I don't want to look at it. We can actually tell the difference between actual vibrancy and saturation. So I'm going to bring my vibrancy to 50 points and then my saturation up to 3 points. 
So far, you can already see the image coming back to life, especially if you look at these monitors that are calibrated, you can really see the difference. I'm not really concerned about noise because this was only shot at 200 ISO. One thing that is huge to stand out for in Optics Pro is your light and color advanced palette. Just out of curiosity, how many of us are actually practicing white balance? White balance? Okay, using like a gray card or spider cube, your x ray passport, whatever, you, whatever it is that you have to get that color accuracy that you have. Okay, another question is, how many times have you ever actually forgotten that tool? Of course, it happens to all of us, right? Yeah, okay. So what we've done is, we've done all the color rendering ahead of time in our labs. If you go to light and color advanced palette, and if you go to color rendering, you can select color rendering, you can select camera body. Here's every dedicated ICC profile that we've created ahead of time based off of a laboratory standard that we've created in our labs. You can also rip the color from third party companies and apply it to your Canon camera. If you want your, let's say your Canon 5D Mark III to look like that new Nikon um, 810 that just recently came out, I can rip the color from that 810 and apply it towards my Canon file. This is a really huge tool for event and wedding photographers. Let's say for instance, I'm Mr. He's the head photographer, he's Mr. Nikon, I'm Mr. Canon, and holy smoke, she showed up with a Pentax. We can actually now put all those images in one bucket and select one ripped color and all the images would have the same uniformed color. You wouldn't know which, which um, image came out of camera. Yeah. What we're going to do right now is we're actually just going to go to the 50D because that's the profile that was used in order to capture this image. Style toning, I would switch over to a landscape mode. And if you keep your main focus attention, you can clearly see that I start from the top of the ladder and I gradually start working my way down so that I don't get confused. I really wish I could tell you there's a wrong or right way of using a tone curve, but there really isn't. There's just a tremendous amount of practice and just being repetitive with the tool until you get it right. But the same type of adjustments that you get with the tone curve, you can also get using the selective tone tool or the, the channel mixer. But if you have, if you have the average know-how, the tone curve obviously is a no-brainer. Okay. So it probably took me about three to five minutes while explaining all of this to you. If you could be so kind just to keep your main focus attention on the monitors that are on the left-hand side, I'm gonna show you what we captured. And this is what we fixed in under three minutes while I was explaining everything to you. Now keep in mind, if we had to use, go the old fashioned route, how many of us are actually familiar with like Nick Verveza? Nick Verveza? All of us, right? Nick was holding down the industry for a couple of years, like seven year old technology, unfortunately it's dead. No one's doing any updates, no one's doing any improvements to it. I saw on the other hand, we're the innovators of, of this game. There hasn't been a sensor or a lens that's been created that we haven't touched yet. That's why we're capable of giving you these type of extensive corrections. This is the very first time that you're gonna come in a counter of software that's made for your camera. Um, if you're familiar with like Photoshop and Lightroom and if you're familiar with how they have that little lens correction feature, it's fairy dust, it's fake. I mean, it's someone such as myself or yourselves sitting behind a computer and saying, hey, this is what a 16 to 35 should look like. Hey, this is what a 24 should look like. This is completely based and tailored for, for your unit. And the reason why I'm capable of making these extensive corrections as quick as I am is because of this. The largest database in the world of dedicated optical modules, chances are, there, you guys are using our technology and don't even use it. Like if you're using an Apple iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy, our technology is in your pocket. Like this is what we do and what we do best. We create dedicated modules. You can actually take pictures with your Apple iPhone or your Samsung Galaxy phone and actually implement your images into Optics Pro. I mean, some things that are really impressive, one I would have to say is our Sony database. No one really does anything for Sony, and Sony, they make really good units. 
Here's a Sony A99 with Konica Minolta glass, with Sigma glass, with Sony glass, with Tamron glass, Carl Zeiss glass, and this list continues to grow and grow every day. And the beauty about it is you never have to go looking for this information. Optics Pro is so smart and sophisticated that it's gonna pick up automatically on your EXIF and metadata and show you which module it is that you need to download. And it's just one click of a button. It's nothing overwhelming like I gotta go look for it, then I gotta figure out where to put it and in order to get this going. Let's stop and look at this image and stop and ask ourselves how long it would take us to fix this. Obviously we can see there's a major issue with the pillars. Uh, there's a high, there's a, a backlit I, uh, issue, and let's be realistic, the foreground's underexposed by like maybe a stop and a half, two stops. But with us, we can stack our corrections where I can go to optical corrections, I can get rid of the distortion. I can go into my DxO smart lighting tool and turn on the lights and put in a strong. I can now from this point on go to exposure compensation and recover the blown out highlights in the back just by going to highlight priority medium. And you're done. This is your before and here goes your after. So you can consider us prepping and pampering the file to send out to your third party host. There goes your before and after. Yeah, we could get the sky back in by far a lot more. If you look here, yeah, this one's by far a lot better. Once you go into your selective tone tool, you can start recovering your sky, or you can do a little trick or tip. I'll show you how to do that, where <clears throat> we can actually show you how to recover your blown out highlights and shadow details. It's kind of like creating a layer mask in, in, in Photoshop with half of the frustration. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about because I did it earlier in an earlier class and people kind of enjoyed it because it's fairly simple. So, <clears throat> let's just get rid of these. Okay, I'm pretty sure we all look in this background. That white's completely blown out. Major issues, right? So I'm gonna show you how to do something called highlights and shadow recovery in the forms of a layer mask. Um, your very first step is you want to go to your initial image, which is, this is our initial image, and you want to right click on your image. From that point on, what you want to do is you want to create a virtual copy. We're going to create a virtual copy. You can see I have my original and my virtual copy, one and two. So my first step is I want to add some fill to these drapes. So we'll rely on a DxO smart lighting tool for that. Okay, I'm happy there. My next step is I want to recover these blown out highlights that are in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to exposure compensation. We're going to switch over to center weight average. I'm going to rely on my selective tone tool and see how much more information it recovers. Okay, if I didn't bring this image out, I would have never known that there was an actual corner in this one image. You can see our before, and you can see our after. It's like a night and day difference. From this point on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack both images because they've been prepped and they're ready to be pro um, processed. We're going to export it to our third, par uh, third party host, which is in this case, good old Faithful Blue. If there's one thing, I mean, Photoshop was never intended to uh, attend it for us. It was just something that we've adapted to throughout the years. Um, Optics Pro, on the other hand, is completely made and tailored for photographers, not digital artists, for photographers. It's finally something for us. Go figure, right? So here goes my first. Here goes my second. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually just going to grab the Move tool. I'm going to grab the Move tool hold down shift and drop it in place. My next step is to make sure that it's aligned properly. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just go to normal and there's this really cool feature in Photoshop if you go under the layers called difference. It kind of turns the image into like a Pink Floyd psychedelic cover album if you know what I'm talking about. So we can see that it's perfectly aligned properly. This is something that you can do with your 
You can do this with your trackpad, you can do this with the mouse. If you have like a bamboo or a stylus, anyone have like a bamboo or Wacom tablet at home? Okay, you're gonna cut through this thing like a hot knife going through cheese very quick. Um, from this point on, you would just do your light coloring. You know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way down and we're gonna make an, a, a layer mask. You can see the layer mask right there. And now we're gonna grab our fancy paintbrush. Oh, let me switch that over. And just start putting that Wacom tablet into good use. Keep in mind and stop and look how, you literally just skip two steps manually if you had to do this manually in Photoshop. And you can clearly see that the image is coming back to life. Give or take that you're gonna have to adjust the opacity and things of that nature. But just to give you a general idea, that's how we would create that. Once you're done making your adjustments, you're just gonna flatten the image and it turns into one singular image and you're good to go, done. So that's one little tip and trick. And there's other things that we talk about on our webinars and things like that that I'll also give you information on. Um, just out of curiosity, how many of us are actually shooting with wide angle lenses? Wide angle lenses? Okay, good share amount of us then. Okay, so I definitely have to show you this then. Um, this is just a major tool that's always gonna bail you out. This is actually a really good demonstration on showcasing how smart and sophisticated Optics Pro is. Optics Pro is automatically tapping into the EXIF information on all these files and it's recognizing that it's giving me a fair warning and it's telling me, hey Hector, I see that you have a 5D and a 14 millimeter lens and I also see that you have a 5D and a 12 to 24. Can you please download the dedicated modules? By downloading these dedicated modules, you're gonna correct for the four optical flaws. That's distortion, vignetting, chromatic aberration, and most importantly, uh, lens softness. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna fix what's broken with this image. Let's go to no correction. We're gonna jump into our customization tab. I'm gonna go all the way up on top and zoom in at a one-to-one. -one. If you could keep your main focus attention on this good, gen uh, this good looking gentleman here, this is dad. You can clearly see dad's about 10, 15 pounds heavier. All right, this is being caused by the outskirts of the wide angle lens. You ever notice how your wide angle lens is usually thumbtack sharp in the center and then your edges kind of give off, they get warped, they get distorted. This is known as a really big terminology known as volume deformation. I don't like big words, they scare me. Let's just say warping, dad's warping, right? So you can see dad's about 10, 15 pounds heavier. Um, once again, let's stop outside of ourselves and stop and ask, how would we approach this in Photoshop in order to correct this? You could use your free transformation tool, you can use your liquefying tool and tweak, 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 tweak. Take 10 minutes to regain consciousness and then tweak a couple more because you're upset because it's taking too long. This is the beauty and this says how much this software is working for us as photographers and not against us. This is really known as a, um, this is known on, uh, under detail and geometry. If you go to detail and geometry advanced, you're gonna notice that there's a, a tab that says volume deformation. We're gonna select that individual tab. We're gonna select horizontal vertical, split it in half and look at that now. That's fast. And if I start panning over to the left hand side, anyone who's suffering from any sorts of uh, deformation, distortion, call it what you want, have been accounted for. And this goes all based on what we're doing in our valuation process. This is the beauty about this software. If you're wondering why has this software kind of been like a, a hidden unkept secret and why you haven't heard of us before, is because we've been killing ourselves for well over 20 years to give you, a, to deliver you a database that's so huge and extensive that no other competitor can catch up to. Hence, DxO was born. Um, if there's one website I could highly recommend, it's probably a good time to pull out a pen or a pad or, or write this down on your notepad. Um, if you ever want to see how good and how bad these manufacturers are doing their jobs, there's this one website that you can go to by the name of DxO Mark, like the name, M-A-R-K dot com. It's considered like the holy grail for like image quality. It's the only website in the world where we actually publicize in real time, live, how well and how bad these manufacturers are doing. Um, how many of us have heard about that new killer Nikon 810 camera that just came out, right? You wanna see how good and how bad that camera is? 
go to our website, dxomark.com, and we'll give you all our laboratory standards indicating how good and how bad that sensor is. You can even mix and match different types of third-party glass with that camera, and we'll redirect you to the lens that's gonna give you the best image quality, because that's what we're about at the end of the day, just giving you the best image quality over any, any other competitor. How many of us actually work out of Lightroom? Lightroom? Cool, okay. So let's say, you know what? Hey, I hate Optics Pro. I don't like it. I'm all about my Lightroom. That's great. Guess what? We just came out with a Lightroom update. You can now drive, you can now drive Optics Pro directly out of Lightroom. This was like a game changer for us. When we did this, things got really interesting. Um, me personally, in my personal opinion, um, Lightroom has replaced Adobe Bridge throughout the years. That's how I strongly feel and that's what I'm gonna stick to it. Um, if there's certain functionalities in Lightroom that I do use that I'm a big, a big fan, a big sucker for, I'm a big fan for their Flash and HTML templates. I could have a client come into the studio, hey, when you get to your office or you get home, check your email box. All of a sudden, a contact sheet from that shoot, literally that happened four or five hours ago, is in your client's mailbox. You look like a rock star. Like this is the guy I always wanna go to because the minute I walk out of his studio, the wheels are turning. None of that three to five business days. Remember back in the day how you would get like con like physical contact sheets? They would come in like a yellow binder folder because there were so many, con those days are over. I'm a huge sucker for, um, for the web template and saving their environment. So you did two good things. You saved a couple of trees and you saved some time. Um, the print feature, not necessary. Slideshow feature, not necessary. Books, not really. Maps, I remember where I was with Big Hector when we took the pictures that day. The development module, on the other hand, has completely been replaced from top to bottom by Optics Pro. Library, if you're not into manually archiving, library is the way you want to go. It will, do, it will do it automatically for you. Your keywording, your cataloging, it's great for things like that. As far as like image processing, overall image processing, I mean, there's just, there's so many things that we're capable of doing that you just can't do in, in Optics Pro. And I'm gonna just compare standards for a second. I'm not gonna touch up the image. We're just gonna compare standards. So let's remove that. Okay, so this is Nikon's, this is a Nikon file. I think this was a D3. And this is, this is how Adobe Lightroom standard is opening up this image. Every image processing software has a different standard how they open up images. Um, Adobe, Capture One, they all have different standards. I'm gonna compare our standard to their standard and then I'll let you decide for yourself what standard is better or worse. So that being said, we already know how to import images into Lightroom, so we're just gonna jump a couple of steps. Now let's say we wanna retouch this. You could either, um, in the old days, you would have to go to photo and edit in, and then locate the application of your choice. Times have changed, we do things differently. We're gonna go to file, plug in extras, and we're gonna transfer over to Optics Pro. By doing this, Lightroom is gonna communicate with Optics Pro, keeping all metadata and EXIF information intact. Yeah, we're capable of doing that now, because before we weren't, and now the image shows up in Optics Pro. From this point on, what we're doing is, I'm gonna show you a quick little before and after. Let's wait for the magic wheel to stop turning. Okay, so you can clearly see right here, I haven't done anything, and I assure you, I'll even go back to apply, no corrections, I'll go to no corrections, all right? So there's our no corrections. I'm gonna go to apply, and I'm gonna go to our DXO Lab standard. We're gonna export back into Lightroom. A dialog box will open up indicating how do you wanna output out. Do you want to output as a JPEG? Do you want to output as a TIFF, a DNG? Like, what's the flavor of the week? Considering the fact that I shoot raw all day, every day, I like to process out as 16-bit non-compressed TIFFs. So I'm going to go here. 
Export as a TIFF, not 8-bit, but a 16-bit. The IUCC profile as shot, I'm okay because in camera I usually shoot as Adobe 1998. So we're good to go. I'm gonna overwrite the correction previously. Optics Pro is in a fixed width broken between a combination of the lens and a sensor and then slingshot it right back into Lightroom. When you slingshot it right back into Lightroom, it shows up as a private collection and you can clearly see the collection today. Where is it? Okay, the 12th, there we go, right here. One image, one single image. You can still batch process if you want. You can batch process about 255 images in under 30 minutes in Optics Pro. Like the cache performance system is extremely aggressive and very fast. Um, considering what is under the hood of the machine is gonna determine how fast that um, batch process goes. But just to give you a general idea, now that we have both images in, you can see we have one of two and two of two. If we click on one of two, it's doing something known as fo uh, photo stacking, where it's keeping the original and the retouched image together, which is really nice if you're really big into archiving and organizing. So what I'm gonna do now is, we're just gonna compare the two. And if you look at these monitors here, these are by far a lot more accurate. You can see how much more justification we're doing to the file over Lightroom. Because while everything over here is generic, you can clearly see how much more uh, we brought back this image to life. And we haven't done anything to it. We just opened it up and sent it right over. Keep in mind, there's still a little availability for fine tuning and making those little cool corrections. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some fun because considering the fact that we were talking about DxO Optics Pro, there's two different versions, keep that in mind. There's the Elite Edition, which will accommodate full frames and crop sensors. There's the Standard Edition, which will only accommodate um, crop sensors only. So ideally when people shot medium format, they only shot two different types of film, which is weird. They had over 60 films to choose from, but medium format photographers for some reason always kept going back to Kodak Portrait 160NC and Kodak Portrait 160VC. NC for neutral color and VC for vivid color. So ideally what we were trying to do was, we were actually trying to go for like that morning dew, but we all slept in and we missed out. So what we need to do is we need to replicate and emulate that look. I'm gonna go to film grain. Not only have we studied 35 medium format, large format, but we've even studied custom formats. Because if you've ever shot different formats of film, you can clearly agree with me when I say this, film grain drops differently on every format. 35 millimeter, medium format, large format. They all drop differently. So what I'm gonna do is, the same filters that I use for my dedicated black and white, ironically, can be used for color. So we're gonna just give it a, a bit of a warm tone. Warm it up. My next step is I wanna get creative, and this is where we apply our textures, our light leaks, our scratches. This is where Film Pack is just all fun and games, and you're just getting lost in the application. We can attach a creative frame to it, And there goes your before and after. So it's doing little things like this that's gonna help really make, I mean, the frames is probably a little too cheesy for me. I'm into the scratches and the warm tone, but to each his own. Everyone has their own different preference. And for the last demonstration, let's just go over here. Do you know about how many frames there are? Oh yeah, there's several frames. Do you want me to take you through a tour of the frames? Absolutely. Here, let's just open it up. I'll start from the very first frame. So that's no frames. And we'll start going through each individual frame. There goes your white borders, your black, your black on white, your white on black, your white line, black line, your dark rooms. Slide two, slide two, your instant. I would have to say I'm a fan of the instant, the instant black and white and the glass and the scratches. Which you can also fine tune at your own discretion as well. Because if you go here and you start fine tuning the size, you can clearly see what it's starting to do to the image. You can also randomize and rotate them. 
to just get lost and get a little bit more creative. For the next demonstration, we're just going to take it to our backyard. We all know what this is, right? Say hey, it's right up the street. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to have fun with this one. We're just going to give it like a little creative look. I'm going to go with Kodak, Kodachrome. I want to make the film grain very dense. Go into textures. We're going to give this one more of an orange. Make it very faint. We're trying to give it the impression as if the sun's coming up. From here, you could just get lost in your textures and your light leaks. Light leaks is actually another nifty one. Here, let's go that way. And then you're pretty much done there. There goes your before and after. So it's little things like this that's just going to help you take your, your images to the next level and give you that bit of an advantage. Just creating all these different signature and creative looks. Just having fun, really, because if it's not fun, then it's just plain old simple boring. Who wants to do it? Just out of curiosity, how many of us are actually shooting with wide angle lenses, tilt and shift lenses, any specialty lenses once in a while? Because someone had asked me earlier about viewpoint that they've never, was it you? OK, I'm going to just take five or 10 minutes to go over viewpoint. Um, viewpoint is literally the perfect companion for any wide angle lens or any specialty lens. Um, how many of us have images that look like this? We all do, right? The building's falling backwards. This is an application that took us 20 years to develop called Viewpoint. Ideally, we weren't really here to speak about this, but we're just going to take a couple of minutes just to go over it. This is Viewpoint. Viewpoint specializes in perspective control and geometric corrections, slanted buildings, tilted horizons. You can spend there for a couple of minutes in Photoshop or spend a couple of seconds. What we're going to do right now is take our anchor points and we're going to reference off of the two best horizontal um, points. There goes one. And these are actually vertical, but two. I'm done. Apply corrections. <laughs> Unlike any other image processing software on the market, we're the only ones capable of giving you your whole entire canvas size. So your very first point is you want to focus on your vertical reference points. Once you have that down, with the crop tool, we give you the capability of, of cropping in and utilizing your whole entire canvas size to make your building sit right side up in a fraction of the time. There's people literally right now returning their, their tilt and shift lenses because of this application. And it took us 20 years because Viewpoint's the only application on the market that specialized, um, that can tap into well over 15,000 different type of specialty lenses. Um, this one, this is actually a really good one. This is a picture, uh, this is a painting on my friend Charlie's painting. Call, you always have that one friend that calls you up to take photographs of like the most random things. Well, this is that one friend, Charlie. Um, forgot to ask Charlie, hey Charlie, what's the painting made out of? It was an oil painting when I showed up. Flash, oil, you already know what's gonna happen. It's going to light up like a silver reflector. So I had to take off my flash and evaluate to 1 8 and I shot it at a skewed perspective. The beauty about viewpoint is we can completely take this picture frame off the wall and put it right in front of your face. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our perspective and we're going to grab our four point rectangular tool. What we're doing right now is referencing off of both horizontal and vertical reference points as a whole. So your very first step is you want to line up your anchor points. And I'm done. Keep in mind how long it wow. take you to do this in Photoshop. Exactly. When I saw this, I had the same reaction myself. Um, pixels don't interpolate, doesn't get flat, doesn't get muddy. Most importantly, completely linear and non-destructive. All that fine detail that's in the painting has remained intact. There goes your before and after. And this is another perfect example why, what I'm talking about. Because this is one tool. That's completely sla um, slapped on. Okay, I told myself if Viewpoint can fix this, 
Viewpoint can fix anything. Ideally, I would need two things. I would need a really expensive tilt and shift lens and a six foot ladder in order to photograph this properly. Realistically, Viewpoint, just by utilizing the four point rectangular tool, our exclusive four point rectangular tool, because you can't find this anywhere else, your very first step is you want to align your anchor points when it comes to very iffy situations such as this. Your next step is you want to keep mind for your loop tool. I speak to so many of our faithful end users and they always sleep on the loop tool. That loop tool is actually there to help you. If you notice that anchor points lit up teal, I can cherry pick each individual um, anchor point and pixel per inch. You can do this with your cursor keys. You can do this with the Wacom tablet. You can do this with the mouse. If you do this with the mouse, the only thing I would highly suggest you do is adjust the, the ratio speed on the mouse because obviously one little slight tweak of the mouse and your anchor point is going to end up all the way in a corner. So while I set up each individual anchor point, just stop and think about how long it would take you to do this in other overwhelming third-party post-productive workflows. While you're still thinking about it, I'm done. Go down, apply a correction, make your building sit right side up. Like this is the beauty and this is like the message that I can't stress enough when it comes to the products that we create at DxO. This is the very first time that you're going to come in a counter of image processing software working for you and not against you. Realistically, let's all be honest with one another. How many of us have ever gone out and purchased like a Photoshop book or an image processing book? I have textbooks that go back years if you want them. DVDs? Got them? Of course. How many times have you ever signed on YouTube to try to figure something out? Oh, how did I know that? Of course I do, because I spent four years to be licensed to be able to teach Photoshop. I've gone through all the frustrating, like literally if, if, if I had a window for every time I wanted to throw my computer out of it, I probably would. The easiest thing to do is just to walk away from it for a couple of minutes, regain those fresh pair of eyes, and then just sit back and do it all over again. Those days are, are so long gone now. This is like, this is the new suggested workflow on image processing, and this is the message that we're trying to come across. There's a new sheriff in town, obviously. Or even if it comes to something like this, this one goes out to anyone with the Nikon 12 to 24, no offense, you literally paid over $1,000 for your lens to do this every single time. You can clearly keep your main focus attention on this lovely lady. Obviously, she's not so lovely. She's completely distorted, elongated head, elongated shoulder. For this gentleman right here, if his head's shaped like that in real life, God bless him, right? Um, the beauty about what we're doing is that you can easily identify what type of correction needs to be applied just by looking at our simplified icons. If I go to volume deformation, I can clearly see everything's going at a diagonal distortion. Click it, I'm done. Wow. Free transformation tool, warping tool, liquefying tool, then you're done, one click of a button, done. And this is based off of, this is all based off of actual hardware. This is based off of sensor information. This is based off of lens information. There is nothing generic about this. This one we purposely made for the architect. So we started working with like really prestigious architect photographers and we wanted to figure out what makes them tick, what makes them talk, what gets you annoyed. As an architect photographer, they were like when two lines meet at a certain area and one area looks like it's falling backwards, the other area looks like it's falling uh, forwards. So what he was referring to is when two lines meet at a certain access point. Okay, because I had to ask him, can you explain that to me in English because I'm not an architect photographer. So if you keep your main focus attention on this one line, this is the second line and it meets right here. That's the access point. So you got one line here, the second line, and then here's our access point. We were really excited to introduce the eight point mode. The eight point mode gives you the capability of adjusting both horizontal and vertical independently, but not as a whole. We can literally flip this scene and make it seem as if you're standing there in real, uh, in real time. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So as I'm looking for my reference point, and I'm almost done, OK, what I'm going to do right now is switch over to a natural perspective, apply the correction, 
we're going to crop out. OK, natural. Um, I'm not really a big fan of negative space. So I'm just cropping this out to my own liking and to each his own. Uh, food for thought, tip of the day, keep this in mind. You can crop outside the black masking. Um, use your content awareness. Uh, use anything that's capable of filling in an empty space. Fill in that empty gap. Let's say we missed a little bit of the clouds and we put a little black clipping, content awareness, and, and fix it right up. There goes your pr perspective sitting right side up now as if we were standing there in, in person. And this is the beauty about what we're doing at, at DXO. We're just making image processing software for all you serious and demanding photographers to take advantage of. Anyone into HDRs at all? I was just going to ask you, what's your HDR? Cool. OK, we got a couple of people in here who are into HDRs. OK, so the beauty about our HDRs is we're really lazy about it. No need to carry a tripod. No need to carry a shutter release. No need to take multiple bracketed images. One single shot HDR, because we bracketed for light ahead of time, because it's a part of our evaluation process as we're evaluating the sensors. So now I can easily just grab, this is when me and the boys were out on our walkabouts. So uh, let's see if I can find a decent one. OK, this one's cool. Uh, go here. Uh, single shot HDR, you're going to go to your customization tab, you're going to go to your apply presets, you're going to go to your high dynamic range single shot. We give you some large um, general preview um, thumbnails to look at. Um, me, for this type of scene with the lights, I'm going to go artistic. Mm, there you go. And it's still fine tunable. This is not us just saying, hey, this is where you're stuck at. This is what you have to work with. This is what, uh, this is what um, also we're capable of doing. Single shot HDRs. I would have to say the black and whites are actually really interesting when you do them to portraits. Yeah, like con um, controlled lighting env uh, environment portraits, you get some really nice effects with uh, the HDR and the micro contrast slider. You get like all those really grungy crannies and stuff like that. It's just interesting to look at. But on a nutshell, that's pretty much what we're doing. We're creating image processing software for all demanding and serious photographers. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.